Well, we welcome you on a beautiful Saturday morning to Champion Stadium at ESPN Wireless Sports. Another three days of baseball for you on UAAA Live and Facebook Live. Bernie Guthrie, Dan Stone, Lindsay Schmidt will be with us shortly. And we have our 12U game followed by a 13 and 14U game this morning. It's the Southeast taking on the Far West. We've already seen the Far West take a region as they and took up the 9U division yesterday. Midwest, Far of course, West they took the final game because both of the Midwest teams advanced to the championship game. And the Atlantic took the middle of the two yesterday as we see the Far West are going to be the visitors today. Noah Gutierrez leads things off. Dan Stone, the lead scout for this All-American Games, obviously has been a part of so many of these big moments scouting these athletes trying to find the best baseball players in the country <laughs> one away here in the first inning i think the one thing that we saw one yesterday out. dan is what a great job you did of picking people that were outstanding defensively. Yeah, Bernie, uh, I'd say in our 11U game, it was all about defense. Um, our left fielder, he had two throw outs to third base, and also our right fielder had a throw out to second base. Um, so it was a great defensive game. Um, also on offense, they were hitting the ball. Xander Bretz, a Z-man, they call him, one of the eight finalists nationwide for the MLB Junior Home Run Derby with a base hit there. And that brings to the plate Luke Rossi now. Rossi had a Salinas, California, and Oakland A's fan. He's had a game where... He threw a no-hitter and struck out all 18 batters. That's dominant, and here he launches this one over the fence for a two-run home run. Rossi's got the far west on the board, and they lead it two to nothing. Just like that, two-run homer. That a way to start the party. And this ball got out of here in a hurry. I think if we had flight scope, it would have told you that that was a pretty low launch angle, maybe 15 of, or 16, kind of almost got out of here in line drive fashion. Yeah, it almost looked like a tee shot. So Rossi. As the Far West leading two to nothing, and that brings to the plate Ethan Watson. Watson popped up, called for on the infield, and caught over at second by Tate Hess. Now number two here in the first inning. Now batting, number 55, Julian Orozco. Julian, Orisco from Long Beach, California. Hits this ball well and it's gonna go over the fence for and a ground rule double. With a ground rule double. Two oh count there, he's sitting fastball and he saw it and he decided to swing away and got a double out of it.
Jasper Aldman now coming to the plate out of West Hollywood, California. Jay Sutley is his favorite baseball player. That one scoots away. Look at this start for the Far West, jumping all on top of the Southeast All-American team and their pitcher, William McMorris. Two balls and a strike. Out of way. I think the key for McMorris today is going to be throwing that first pitch strike and not falling behind in counts. Um, when you start doing that, you're going to start giving up base hits. So uh, the key today is for him to be consistent on that first pitch strike and staying ahead in the count. One, two. Took a wicked hop to the second baseman. It's going to allow a run to score. That was a tough play for Tate Hess to try to make it. Alasco scores. Two balls, two strikes, and two out. And three runs already in here in the first inning. This one lined in that time. It is caught by Tate Hess. But the Far West team, they get on the board in a big way. Luke Rossi leaves the yard with a line drive home run. And now the Southeast All-American team will come to the plate for the first time when we come back to Champion Stadium. Qualifying is on to be a Boomba All-American, and this year's UAAA All-American Games have been expanded to create more opportunities for more players. This year, there'll be 24 regional showcase tryouts that will select two teams per region with 12 players on each team, allowing the athletes to compete in an average of 22 innings of play during the tournament. Also new for this year is a three-game single elimination championship bracket. Get evaluated in hitting, running, and two defensive positions of your choice for your chance to qualify for the Boomba All-American Games. Get more information at UCCAAAllAmerican.com. And we welcome you back here to Champion Stadium, getting set to get started here for the bottom of the first inning. Far West up by three on defense now. Kind of wearing that Dodger blue. I think that was what you're going for, right? Julian Orozco. I know that geographically, Matt Trevishon, when he put together the program, kind of wanted to give these players a look and feel of the, the area that they represented. Orozco battling against Matthew Melancon. And Melancon is taken care of by the third baseman, Kyle Day, for the first out here in the first inning. One out. So important for the pitchers after you get off to such a great start to get some great defense behind you. There they are. Day is at third. It's Elagan at shortstop. Gutierrez at second base. Buckholtz at first. Hernandez in left. Bretza is the center fielder. And out in right is Zachary Plussard. Here's your defense. William McMorris, the pitcher.
There's a base hit for McMorris. Matthew Mana, the shortstop. You know, Bernie, going to each one of these showcases, um, going to the southeast, all of these kids on this team can swing the bat. So uh, be on the lookout for uh, the ball leaving the park today. Matthew Mana's nickname, Panda from Denham Springs, Louisiana. I hear you're gonna take a road trip to Louisiana shortly. Yeah, we're gonna be doing um, some Select 30 fast pitch. Uh, so I uh, believe we got the 15, 16, 17, and 18 girls uh, starting next week, as well as the NPF championship. Mob fouls it away. It remains 0 and 2. Down on strikes, two away. Great pitch there by Orozco. Southeast is going to get on the board here for the first time. A triple. Danell Sandifer. Officially, they're going to mark it a double and then advancing over to third on an air. That teaches you, though, Danny just got to take care. Yeah, uh, um, baseball. Once, once you get at this level, these teams are going to take advantage of every mistake you make. And just like that, uh, your mistake cost a run right there. Popped up, called for and caught out in center field. The play made, that retires the side. Southeast gets on the board, 3-1 our score, headed to the second inning. Funny thing about the overnight success story, it doesn't happen overnight. It starts here. Here. And here. And after all that, you still gotta earn it here. Funny thing about the overnight success story, it doesn't happen overnight. It starts here. Here. And here. And after all that, you still gotta earn it here. story. 
you should get. It's all about the moments. Leading off the second inning for Far West National, the left fielder number 40, Ray Hernandez. Back here at the USSA All-American Games, here's a look at the Southeast American defense as we bring you back here for the second inning of play. Southeast, the home team trailing by a run. Their pitcher, William McMorris, on the infield. Cooper Burgess is at third. Matthew May, the shortstop. Second baseman, Tate Hess, over at first base is Peyton Albert. Outfielder John Alex Walsh in left field. Madden in center field. And the right fielder Caleb Ikes. Or Ickies, we should say. Ray Hernandez is the batter. Far West team up by two. We're upgrading our booth now to the Vice President of National Events, Matt Trebuchon. Good morning, Bernie. Glad to have you with us. I know that uh, we missed you yesterday. It's such a busy week for you guys, having to take care of business wherever you are. And obviously, uh, it's got to be a little bit of time for you guys to exhale finally as you see Hernandez draw a walk because this has been a very busy three weeks of baseball. Yeah, um, people on the outside don't see what goes on on the backside. And uh, this is day number 23 in a row, um, 14, 16 hours a day. Um, you know, it, it, it takes a toll. It takes a toll on us, the staff, the people that put these events together, the people that are at the park every day, um, our summer interns. It, it, it takes a toll on everybody, and it takes a toll on our families too. Um, I unfortunately was unable to see my son's first day of school. Um, you know, it's always been a tradition in our family that I uh, school on his first day, but. Uh, Osceola County Public Schools decided they were going to start a week early this year, so it threw me a curveball. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, that's 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 the sacrifices we make, and uh, you know, we, I do what I do because I love what I do. Buck holds the batter from Phoenix, Arizona. When I thought about going, but overall, I think it was a, a very successful three weeks of baseball yeah I don't want to jinx us because we got to get through uh, two games and four innings four and a half innings but uh, mother nature has been very very kind to us this uh, this summer um, you know as I do these managers meetings every week and, and you know a lot of people don't realize is I actually also um, involved a little bit with the fast pitch road to Orlando World Series that I do two weeks prior to the baseball yeah starting so but I do these manager meetings, and I always emphasize these people. It's going to rain. 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 And I think um, in the Elite World Series, an eight-day event, we had one day where we had rain. Wow. And then uh, last week, um, or two weeks ago, we S30, uh, we had one day of rain. And then we've yet to have any rain for this event. We've had one day of lightning delay. So the weather, Mother Nature has been very, very kind to us this summer. This is Tristan Alagan from Fullerton, California, Dodgers fan. Guess you set them up thinking that it could be a lot of rain and that if it's a lot better, then uh, more power to us, right? Right, yeah, I, I guess it makes me look like I'm, uh, I can control the weather. In some ways, we obviously could experience rain next year at the USSA Space Coast Complex, but uh, it's going to be even less of an issue because that was part of that uh, one day that we had rain here a week ago for the Select 30. And what could have been probably an hour, hour and a half delay turned into four hours because you had to let the dirt dry. But the hour and a half delay is only going to be an hour and a half delay. Right, yeah, we sat for we sat and watched it rain for a solid hour and 15 minutes. And out there at the Space Coast Complex with the artificial surface, you know, 15 minutes after it's raining, there's no, to play, right? yeah, there's no water on the field. Whereas here we had to hang around for another almost uh, or two and a half plus hours waiting on the field to get dry enough to where they could repair the field to get back to play. So that'll be nice uh, to uh, not have to deal with uh, those long, those long lengthy delays that drive us 
you know, to where we're playing games at midnight and 1 o'clock in the morning and, and that kind of stuff. Thank those of you watching us today on Facebook Live around the country. We've seen a lot of comments to people that, uh, you know, they've just talked about they didn't make it to the championship game, but they're watching, just trying to see how everything unfolds. I'm sure that there's a lot of great curiosity for that. Well, there's another plus to the moving out to the Space Coast next year is the technology built into that complex. You get where, to stream all of them. Yeah, every single game. Yep. You know, and then um, hopefully the, the flight scope stuff will be working. I, you know, it, it's I know. working right now. Just a matter of getting it uh, on all the fields, obviously yeah. functional and you know, scoring app. And for, yeah, and for people who don't know what the flight scope technology is, is just imagine if you're watching a major league baseball game, and you see them talking about Statcast. You know, uh, how hard, how fast the pitch was, the rotation of the pitch, the angle of the pitch, how fast the ball left the bat, the angle that it left the bat, the, you know, all of those types of things, how quick a player got to the ball, and all that. All of that information is provided by Doppler radar, and Doppler radar is what flight scope is. So we're going to have that on every single field, and uh, it's just going to be—it's going to be—it's going to revolutionize. Um, Ooh. Tough play over there on the track. You know that's something that a lot of people don't realize is you've got these young 12-year-olds playing on a major league size uh, spring training field with all this extra foul territory that n a normal 12-year-old field doesn't have. You know, normally the the baseline is 15, 20 feet from the fence, and he's got, what, 50 feet over there he's got to cover today? So it's it's a little different, and you'll see uh, a lot of balls that will fall in foul territory. This is Brady Grinlinger at the play with two on and two out, and, you know, I think the coaches realize, obviously, when it's popped up down the right side and a play that would have gone out of play at any other park, it's... You know, if they make it, extra gold stars, but it's uh, still one of those things that's kind of up in the air, if you will. Well, typically a field with more foul territory is considered to be pitcher friendly. Right. Because your defense has an opportunity to, to, to you know, create some outs that you wouldn't normally create. This is strikeout to retire the side, moving on to the bottom of the second inning. Far West leading the Southeast 3-1 in the 12U championship game. When you step in the box, you gotta be focused. You gotta forget the dugout, ignore the crowd. You can't worry about the guy on the mound because in the end, there's only two things that really matter at the plate. You and your back. Back here for the bottom of the second inning. Burning up there, Matt Trebuchon. Lindsey Schmidt with you, patrolling the dugouts. Even getting a special guest appearance from Brianna Sorensen, who helped do the direct selections of all these athletes. It's amazing to think about the journey that you go on to be an All-American. I think it's a unique program because there's so many different sites, Matt, that around the country, you know, Dan Stone and his great scout team goes out to try to find the best players as you see Elijah Basham at the plate to begin things here in the bottom of the second inning. But geographically, almost no matter where you live in the country, you could probably drive and find a location to be evaluated at. Yeah, with, with like 20 different uh, tryouts that they do in, in like what, 17 or 18 different states, um, you know, they're all over the place. And, and, and you know, the, the general public doesn't realize, um, you know, what it takes to pull that off 
um, you know, set aside the, the, the expenses that are involved in airfare and rent a cars and hotel rooms and meals. Because, you know, you, you, go on the, you go on the road for a, for a Friday night showcase, right. you know, tryout. Well, the, the, the scouting staff has to leave on Thursday. They have to be there the day before, just in case the airlines make a mistake. Right. You know, or just because there's b bad weather along the way. So they got to go out on Thursday. So you got the airfare, and then you've got Thursday night in a hotel. You've got Friday night in a hotel. They fly back on Saturday. You got rent a cars, at least one, depending upon where you're at, possibly multiple vehicles, meals, you know. And then there's the, always the local staff that they have to hire to help them. You know, the, the people that stand there and record the scores and, and, and write down the notes that the scouts call out, you know. It's, it, it takes a dozen people to, to do one successful tryout. So, but, but throw all that aside for a minute and just, just the, the infrastructure that it takes, you know, the administrative end of it. Somebody's got to take all that information when that tryout's over and convert it into machinable data. Basham down on strengths. As you see a strikeout here, One out. Orozco out continuing to pitch here in the bottom of the second inning. <laughs> Driven well to right field after you saw another look at the strikeout a moment ago. And a flyout for the second out. Now batting number 56, Silent Madden. Silent Madden now, the center fielder after Caleb Ikes is retired. Yeah. Debbie Coop cheering on Silent here on Facebook Live. We appreciate your comments. Jackie watching from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Hopeful that he can see Silent Madden get a hit here. He's ahead in the count, 2-0. Oh. Excuse me, it looks like Kai Madden. He's short in his name. Now that I got the bio sheet out. See, some of the parents do such a nice job of Spelling it all out for us to keep us honest. He's from Arkansas. He had a walk-up home run in the 2016 season, a grand slam in the 2017 season. So it sounds to me that he's got some pop. And not knowing anything about him, I would say he's probably a Mike Trout fan. That's right. Man, you were all over it. Hitting and pitching, he got a seven. And there you see those hitting skills take place. I know the one thing that I talked about with Dan Stone yesterday is we saw some spectacular defensive plays. And of course, historically in the All-American games, you have so many games that we cover, so you are gonna get those great diving grabs. You're gonna get you know, the, the shortstop diving over to make the play. But what impressed me the most was the arm strength of the outfielders yesterday. We saw so many great throws in. I think in the 11-year-old championship game, did we not see two runners thrown out at third base yeah. trying to advance um, base hits to the outfield? Guys trying to advance uh, beyond the hit, and I believe twice the, <clears throat> the Midwest national team gunned out runners at third base. In fact, the final one was the last out of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's some cannons in the outfield. The outfield is is being trolled by the cannons. Peyton Albert now at the plate, first baseman. As Southeast trying to get on the board here. The nicest thing I liked about Kai's at bat there, the previous at bat, was the way the way that he he didn't he didn't. He wasn't so worried about pulling the pitch, and he just went with the pitch location. Threw the barrel of the bat out there, took it the opposite way, put it in the hole, and uh, you know that's the art of hitting. The art of hitting is not pulling every ball 
down the line. The art of hitting is, is hitting the ball where it's pitched. Called strike three. Albert is down on strikes and Julian Orozco gets a strikeout to end the threat. That's the end of two innings of play here at Champion Stadium. Far West coming back to the plate up by two. Cocoa Beach. All right, back here for the top of the third inning. Number 83, Kyle Day. Kyle Day will lead things off as William McMorris. Starts his second inning of work. Willie Mack. Calde from Apple Valley, California. Yadier Molina, his favorite player. Two balls, one strike. Skipped inside. Bernie, we won't see any pitcher go more than four innings today, and that's because of the very strict uh, pitching restrictions placed on these All-Americans, and that's, that's mainly done because it is so late in the season. These kids have already thrown a lot of innings, and this is about protecting their arms. Um, so the most we'll see out of any pitcher is four innings. Fair ball down the line. Base hit for Kyle Day. Kyle Day with a base hit down the left field line. That is the only player in the UCSS All-American from High Desert, California. We go now to the top of the order, number 62. Nice Gutierrez. little compact swing. Gutierrez. Boy, that ball was pounced on by the left fielder. Got it, brought in in a hurry, held him to a single. That could have been a double easily. Back to back. Hits that are dialed in. Oh, Noah Gutierrez, oh, nicknamed oh, Nono. Oh, Bet he can pitch. And this is a position, just second base. No outs. Now batting number 56, Xander Bretza. Xander Bretza. The Z-Man. Down the line, this one goes fair. It was blooped up. I thought I was gonna get in foul territory, but instead, it's gonna drive in another run here. For the Far West, who now lead it four to one. Xander Bretza, and that brings us to our home run hitter, Luke Rossi. So Rossi with a chance to drive home a couple. This is almost the exact same spot as that last one, but it continued to drift foul. It's got two sisters, works 
and a baseball academy. A lot of these athletes really try to hone their game during the course of the year. A lot of hours spent trying to be as good at baseball as possible. Brasi, one for one, a two run home run in the first inning. Long ball here, bust this thing wide open. You remember last Saturday, Bernie, I believe it was the 10 year old S30 championship game. We had one player hit three dingers. Yeah. Remember that? Hard to believe that was only a week ago. It feels like a month ago. Dingers all day. Rossi would love to hit his second here, even just a base hit that would drive home a couple more. Two balls, two strikes, and nobody out. Wow. That one sealed far too high for the catcher to try to make the play. Connor Stelly needed a ladder to grab that one. And it turns into the fifth run of the contest. I'm glad the bull wasn't standing back there. For, your, for our younger viewers, make sure your parents let you watch Bull Durham. Not too, too young, but the middle young ones. Called strike three, and Luke Rossi, after hitting a home run, is down on strikes. One out. Now batting number 82, Ethan Watson. This is Ethan Watson, the catcher. You know, Bernie, this is always my favorite week in the summer is the week of the All-American Games. And the reason that is is that you take you take a group of, you know, 13, 14 players that they don't know each other. And they get here on Sunday and they meet their coach. And they meet their teammates. And then on Monday they go have a two-hour practice. And then on Tuesday they start playing a tournament. And it builds uh, these these long-term relationships. In fact, a, a real quick story on that is the 14 and, the 14 and under uh, Northwest squad from last year, they, they forged such strong friendships and such incredible, um, lifelong, lasting bonds that this year, that entire group of players, every one of them, all 13 of them, Next weekend, yep. all those families spread out all over the Northwest United States are all flying to San Diego, California to play in a tournament together. Wow. You know? That's awesome. The same group of boys. And, and, and they have made it, this group of boys has made a pact with each other that they're going to continue to do this until they go off to college. So they're going to do it as 15-year-olds. They're going to do it as 16-year-olds. They're going to do it as 17-year-olds. And, and that's, that just explains what this is all about. It's so much more than baseball. But on top of that, you know, Lindsey Smith, she's down on the sideline in the stands with, with one of the far west players that's really watching and, and tuning things in because I'm sure there's a bond even region to region, Lindsay. Yes, Bernie. And Matt, you were just talking about friendships that are forged on and off the field. I'm here with Owen Wade from Arizona. He plays on the other far west team, the twelve U division, and he's cheering on one of his friends today. Owen, what do you like about this game so far? Um, we're winning. <laughs> uh, 
That's a great reason to like the game. And which of your friends are we cheering on today? Uh, Jack Buckles. Well, we're w wishing Jack the best of luck. Now, you aren't playing today, but can you tell me a little bit about what your experience has been like this week? It's been really fun playing with better kids than what I've played with before. Well, Owen, we look forward to seeing you again sometime, and best of luck to your friends out there. Bernie and Matt, back to you. Thanks so much, Lindsay. You know, you think about the bond, obviously, these guys and the athletes know each other from the regions very well as we see a new pitcher coming on. This is Teed Hess. Now pitching for Southeast America. Number 58. It's probably intriguing because a lot of these athletes are playing USA throughout the year. They're playing at the, the Select 30 Super NITs. They're playing at the Super NITs, the state championships. So you're playing against these guys. And you might say, man, that right fielder is really good. And then finally, you get a week here down in Central Florida to get to know them a lot better. Well, that's forging, forging that friendship and that bond that I mentioned earlier. It's, uh, it's a big deal. Obviously, I mean, <laughs> look at the Northwest team, what they're doing uh, next week as a group of 15-year-olds. Julian Orozco from Long Beach, California, Blue Jays fan. He won the USA Baseball World Series in San Jose, California. Made a diving catch to save the game. Get a courtesy runner for the pitcher. Rossi's going to come on a run as this ball grounded to second, bobbled for a moment, and a nice job of staying with it. A run comes with the out, and that'll make it six to one. Two outs. Now stepping to the plate, number three, Jasper Adelman. Jasper Adelman now from West Hollywood. Got to meet his favorite player last week. Jimmy Rollins was at the Space Coast Complex. Actually, he was sizing up the batter's box out there in what's going to be one of the championship fields at the A quad. Yeah. I could probably sit here and talk for an entire game about that new complex and how incredible it's going to be. And, uh, you know, and how close we already are. I mean, we've got... Uh, I guess there's five fields that are already done, yep. and uh, another four that are real, cl real close. Almond down on strikes. That ends things in the top half of the third. Southeast coming back, trailing by five. With direct flight daily, your vacation begins at GoMelbourneFlorida.com. Bottom of the third inning. Far West leading by five. Connor Stelly will lead things off. Julian Orozco continues to pitch. Their bios are just really a treat. Some of them, you know, they bring so much character to the game, Matt, just uh, when they kind of tell us a little bit of who they are. Well, we all know that baseball players are, are the goofiest of all athletes anyway. You know, hey, look, you got to be off kilter just a little bit to play any game where you can fail 66% of the time and still be an All-American. Connor's entire family was born in Louisiana. 
played USA baseball on teams in Louisiana and Texas. Really strong market down there in Louisiana because they got a chance, obviously, you know, everybody talks about Texas. But if you're playing USA baseball in Louisiana, it's a really great program. And obviously, just down the road, you can play USA baseball in Texas as well. Not too long of a journey. No, and, um, you know, they get to play um, probably a good solid ten and a half months um, in South Texas, at least, you know, down by Louisiana. They have a pretty, a pretty lengthy season due to the weather. Not quite as long as it is here in Central Florida, but um, where, you know, we basically play baseball year-round here. Full count to Stelly. Catcher, shortstop, second baseman. He hit his first home run to help his team get to this championship game. He lists that as his most memorable baseball memory. Well, that's fitting. But here, he's down on strikes to start things off in the bottom of the third. Orozco, another strikeout. One out. Now batting number 57, Cooper Burgess. That one launched into no man's land. And Burgess, with the double Burgess the gets a double. Super aggressive base running there, Bernie, is what made that a double. He left the box with the thought in his mind is I'm taking two. Maybe that'll be the spark that uh, this southeast offense needs to put a nice hefty crooked number on the board and get back in this thing. Tater at the plate, Tate Hess from De Quincey, Louisiana. the MVP in the Louisiana Governor Tournament this year. Great tournament ran by Joey Odom. If you heard that helicopter fly by of Osceola, Osceola County's finest, the Sheriff's Department, taking in a little bit of Saturday morning baseball. Why not, right? Yeah. Well, this is a, a massive area with a lot happening right here in this short spot because obviously we are just a couple of miles from the Magic Kingdom, a couple of miles from Animal Kingdom, Avatar Land, as you see another strikeout, round number two, the water parks, the water slide, it's all here, SeaWorld. What more could you ask for? You know, the Space Coast Stadium out there, uh, Bernie is actually will be the, uh, um, I guess what, is it about, about a 45 minute drive yeah. from, from here? So you can still play at the Space Coast and take in all the Disney stuff. Well, plus out there you've got the beaches. It's interesting because it's actually, I guess, counterintuitive because I heard a couple of people tell me, at least when I was out talking to parents next week, they were happy about having the games be at the Space Coast because they didn't have to have their kids ask them about going to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. A, a truly believable story at that. So Mellon Con is at the plate. So I guess the thing is, you can tell your kids that Disney's an hour away if you really want to go do the Disney Universal, or you can save the $500 a day and just tell them that it's too far away. And just go to the beach. Yep. Mellon kind of Red Sox fan out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. He said he comes from an athletic family. We always talk about the importance of having good genes. DNA. 
There is such a thing as baseball DNA. Yeah? Yeah, it has been scientifically discovered. It's the only explanation for so many successful second-generation baseball players. <laughs> and a fan from Great Vine, Texas, pulls in that foul ball. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Foul away again. Southeast desperately could use a couple of runs here because they played just six innings. It was a long at bat. I believe this coming up is going to be the ninth pitch of the at bat, if my math is right. You're on it. Here is the payoff pitch again. And he draws the walk. Well, let's see. Let's get two strikes on you. Let's foul off six pitches. Yep. Okay. The ones, you know, too close to take, but not good enough to, to, to rip. And then let's draw the walk. The art of the at bat. Big Will at the plate. First pitch fouls it away. William McMorris is the starting pitcher. Yankee fan. That playing right here at ESPN, that's one of the highlights of his young career. You got a big will at the plate, a big will back in the control room. Will Hinson the fourth. Helping us out with our replays back in the command center, back in Vieira. 0 oh, 2. It's 1 and 2. Yeah, you want to talk about technology out there at the Space Coast. Well, you and I, we're here at the ESPN Wild World of Sports. The cameras are here. And all the, and half of the, the stars on camera, we got our stars on camera here, and we got uh, the other stars back punching buttons and putting up the graphics and doing the replay back in the control room. 30, 35 miles away from here. Yep. And then last week, Bernie, you and I did something very, very interesting yeah in that we took that technology and we did a, a return to the back to the future with it and we were here at the espn wide world of sports in a rain delay and we started broadcasting a game that was being played at the space coast stadium in Vieira from here so it was that was a really backwards one that was your first pride game that was my first. As far as a, a broadcaster, you've yeah. taken in a number of Pride games over the years. Well, this is a big spot here for the Southeast. The Panda, his nickname, Matthew Ma, the the at the plate. He's got a twin Matthew sister, Madison, Ma. and the, the second set of twins. He has a 23-year-old identical twin sisters, Kristen Keelan and also a 20-year-old sister, Megan. Well, that's a lot of sisters. And he is going to ground it over to third. Cool, calm, and collect the third baseman. Kyle Day tosses over to the bag at first and ends the threat in the fourth, uh, excuse me, in the bottom of the third inning. Could have been so much more, but the Southeast Strands the maximum.
with direct flight daily. Your vacation begins at GoMelbourneFlorida.com. Each and every day you come out here to the park, you give everything you got. Behind every good team is a great coach. Our hands are not in here, hands are out. Today's coaches mold tomorrow's leaders. It's a lot of hard work. We know the blood, sweat, and tears that go into the job. And that's why this season, coaches fly free when booking their team's travel with us. That's all right. Come on. Fine. Save time. Save money. Fly with the Air Travel Group. And we're back here for the top of the fourth inning. Bernie Gunther, Matt Trebuchon, Lindsey Schmidt. A lot better to be the 9 a.m. game than some of the later games during the game the day because obviously it's a, a heck of a lot cooler earlier on, and uh, you start to bake as we get into the afternoon. Well, plus the afternoon games, you always got the threat of rain or lightning as those uh, tropical um, pop-ups all over the central Florida this time of year. Plus, now you got the rest of the day to go to the, to the park. You do. <laughs> go to the Magic Kingdom or wherever it is you want to go. Hollywood Studios, go down to Universal. Joshua Plaskert. Leading things off. Lined out at his first plate appearance. One and two. Down on strikes, one away. Brian, Denny, uh, Brian and Denny Davis wants to know what's with all the offensive lineman numbers and kind of has to do with just the balance of the uniforms of making sure that across a, a group of age groups that there's a number of sizes that are available that don't overlap. This is probably one of the more effective ways to, I guess, manage sizes, I would assume. Uh, my guess is, and I'm not involved in it, but the, some of the lower numbers are probably some of the, the smalls and the mediums. You, you yeah, you, you realize that you basically it takes it takes two sets of uh, one through the 90s yep. to uniform these players. So you do one set, you start with your smallest size, and you go up to you know 90 whatever shirts, and then whatever size that happens to be, you start numbering again, and you go through 90 again, and. Uh, what that allows you to do is it allows you to uniform 1,300 and whatever players, and uh, the odds of getting a duplicate jersey number on the same team are greatly slimmed. And I would assume that because the outfits are identical, it still gives you some flexibility to maybe get a uniform that's earmarked for the 12U to go down to 11U if it, if it has some space exactly. and availability. Exactly, exactly. And then when you have that, when you have that really, really large 11-year-old, yep. you can take that 13-year-old earmarked uniform and put it on him. Fly out for Big Slick, Ray Hernandez, at the center field. Two outs. Now stepping to the plate, number 41, Jack Buckhold. Jack Buckhold at the plate.
No balls, two strikes, two away. Trying to get a quick one, two, three inning. And that'll retire the side. Moving on to the bottom of the fourth. 6-1 our score. Qualifying is on to be a Boomba All-American, and this year's UAAA All-American games have been expanded to create more opportunities for more players. This year, there'll be 24 regional showcase tryouts that will select two teams per region with 12 players on each team, allowing the athletes to compete in an average of 22 innings of play during the tournament. Also new for this year is a three-game single elimination championship bracket. Get evaluated in hitting, running, and two defensive positions of your choice for your chance to qualify for the Boomba All-American games. Get more information at UAAAAllAmerican.com. Back here at uh, Champion Stadium, ESPN Wild World of Sports, 6-1 to one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, I know that there are some really pleased parents that their child has made it to these All-American games. And, Lindsay, she's found some of the families that are here taking everything in. Lindsay? Thanks, Bernie. I'm here with Tammy and Tommy Miller. They're Elijah's parents. He's up to bat third in this inning, guys. You mentioned to me before, like when we were talking before, that this isn't the first time the Southeast team has faced this far west team. What can we take from, you know, what we've seen last time and apply it to this game? Well, we just need to get our bats started. It's, you know, the pitch has been well on both teams, and their bats have come alive that I hadn't. So if we can get our bats going, we'll do, we do well. And they have some pretty big bats. Elijah's coming up to bat third in this inning. What have you guys, you know, liked about his performance in this tournament so far? Oh, he's got two home runs, mm -hmm. and he's hit well. Mm -hmm. He didn't hit well against this team, but I, I think he's going to turn it around this time. Well, so. in the beginning, they were nervous. It was we, this team we faced the first. Um, it was our first team we faced in the tournament, and so uh, he was a little nervous. But this time, they're they're doing really good. And Tammy was telling me, you know, during this break that she used to be involved with U Triple S A softball. Can you give us a little brief synopsis about what your involvement with softball was? Yes, I was the softball director uh, at Snowden Grove in Memphis and also at game day baseball. Um, uh, we put together uh, uh, softball tournaments with Oxford and the USA team. And uh, just I've been around U-Triple-S-A for a long time. Well, we appreciate the continued support. I'll let you guys get back to the game. Thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. And I got you guys at home know we have the Select 30 for fast pitch softball coming up soon in Baton Rouge. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Lindsay. How about that? To start the inning off, that's about using your wheels. Sandifer trucked around. Fabulous. Well, you got to figure we're here in the bottom of the fourth. You know, we're in the second half of the game, six right. inning ball game, so we're in the fourth. So they got three more shots at them, nine more outs. Um, it's time to it's time to make a move. Well, they had a chance. We've seen them have the bases loaded and come up empty handed. Yeah, they've they've left a lot of base runners on uh, today. Popped up. This is going to score a run. Sacrifice fly for Alex Walsh. Sandifer comes in to make it 6-2. to two. First time since the first that the Southeast team has driven home a run. A 
Elijah Basham out of South Haven, Mississippi. You know the folks at Game Day Baseball well. I do. You're obviously the host for our national youth championships for a number of years and some outstanding hosts they were. Sure, when mom and dad watch, it's probably a little bit nerve-wracking, right? Yeah, I would think so. Uh, you want, uh, you know, you want the best for your son, but at the same time, you want the best for his team. On the infield, that time they got him. Yeah, Lee Fox and Company, some of the best in baseball. Good really house. fabulous host. Now batting number thirty, Caleb Icky. Kiela Bickies out of Prairieville, Louisiana, an Astros fan. Said his great, great grandpa played in the 1925 World Series for the Pirates. Wow. Has that baseball DNA. That one jumped off the bat, but right to the shortstop. And oh. The throw was low, and so the inning is going to continue. Now, the, the Far West has made a mistake here. It is crucial that the Southeast capitalize on this mistake and score this run. Here's a look. At that now low throw, three, just not a whole lot six, you're doing over Madden. at first base. Kyle Day is now the first baseman. Kai Madden. You were on your game when you noticed that he was a, a Mike Trout fan. You could just tell by the way he, he, at the plate. His, his, his batting, I mean, he emulates Trout. And I have good peripheral vision. We'll see if the Southeast can make the Far West pay. Ground ball, second over to first. And the year comes unnoticed as a run does not come in, but Southeast, they get one back, two innings. A baseball remain in our 12U All-American Games Championship. Funny thing about the overnight success story, it doesn't happen overnight. It starts here. Here. And here. And after all that, you still got to earn it here. Funny thing about the overnight success story, it doesn't happen overnight. It starts here. Here. And here. And after all that, you still got to earn it here. Top of the fifth inning. We're having a lot of fun here the at the All-American Games All Championship. Rushing. Bernie Gunther, Matt Trevishon, Lindsey Schmidt. Elijah. Far West, I think that was a big jam for them to get out of surviving. A leadoff triple only produced a run. They gave up an air. So it could have been a whole lot worse than it was. Tristan Alagan. Yeah. 
Ground ball out for the first out here in the fifth inning. One out. Now batting number 51, O'Connell. Brendan O'Connell. Brendan O'Connell, B money. Trying to cash in here in the top of the fifth inning. He's a baseball historian. He is. Sandy Koufax, his favorite player. He said he got injured in Arizona in the UAAA Spring Training Tournament, couldn't run, but coach had him pinch hit in the bottom of the sixth and he hit a walk-off home run. He's retired here for the second out. Two outs. Now second to the plate. All right, and looks like his sister added in the line because the interesting fact about the family, his sister is smarter and tougher than him, and she is only nine. <laughs> My assumption is mom put that in, and maybe the sister added us a line, or he just likes his sister. Yeah. S slid it in there. This is Bradley Grinlinger. And if you're rooming with him in the middle of the night, don't worry. He already admits that he talks in his sleep. This is why I love broadcasting player bioforms. The little, the little tidbits we learn about these athletes. B-Rad, his name. He's down on strikes. That takes care of the top of the fifth. Southeast coming back to the plate. They are down to their final six All outs, right. trailing no six to two. No runs, no hits, no runs. When you step in the box, you gotta be focused. You gotta forget the dugout, ignore the crowd. You can't worry about the guy on the mound because in the end, there's only two things that really matter at the plate. You and your bat. And we're back here for the bottom of the fifth inning at Champion Stadium, Far West leading the Southeast six to two. Bernie Gunther, Matt Trebuchon, Lindsey Schmidt. Kind of a sad day, I guess, if you will, because it's the final day that we have baseball for you for a couple of months. There is baseball for you, Triple S A, because the new season begins, but or began August first. Yeah. Now pitching for Far West National. Number 82, Ethan Watson. Yeah, on the national level, we get a, a short break. We do. Um, the next thing that uh, the next thing on the schedule for at the national level is going to be Thanksgiving weekend. Which I think in all likelihood is going to be here, from what I understand. Yeah, possibly, um, or actually, like the likelihood is that it is going to be here. Um, we were really kind of hoping it would get to be the first event, the first full event, you know, uh, the first baseball tournament at the new Space Coast Complex, but the summer weather has not been friendly to the construction process. It seems close, but I got a chance to look at the updated timeline, and while there will be many parts in place, the whole piece of the puzzle looks like it may not be concluded. There probably is going to be a, I'm assuming at this point, so nobody uh, 
throw me under the bus because I'm making this public knowledge, but it, if you're a wise person, the 50th anniversary of the UAAA National Convention is in November. We haven't had a grand opening, if you will. There's going to be some type of grand opening that's going to happen down there during that week, right before Thanksgiving. So probably, uh, I guess, an unofficial opening that week. Yeah. They'll, they'll tie the knot, and uh, I'm sure we'll be playing baseball by January there. Yeah, yeah, it would have it would have been nice to uh, to kick off with the uh, the very first Select 30 Super NIT of the year, you know. Um, but uh, you know what? We'll gladly return to Disney. We'll gra gladly return to the ESPN Wild World of Sports. We'll strap them on Friday morning after Thanksgiving with our big old fat bellies yep. and go at it. It's got to be one of the favorite tournaments of the year just because the weather is oh. so good that weekend right oh it's it's in the it's in the high 70s low 80s and it is just beautiful there's usually not a cloud in the sky there's no threat of rain there's no threat of lightning it is a beautiful weekend to play baseball in central florida two away Number 57, Cooper and something we did last year with the tournament was is we any team traveling from outside the state of Florida we guaranteed them that they wouldn't have to play until Friday afternoon so what that allowed them to do was travel Friday morning you know make the the four or five or six hour drive whatever it was and uh, that brought in a lot a, a lot more teams from all over the southeast You know, the size of some of these boys, Bernie, I'm not so sure this isn't, isn't like defensive linemen. I know their numbers are definitely defensive linemen, but Lord Almighty, some of these are just some big 12-year-olds. Cooper takes a pitch outside, evens the count, two balls, two strikes. Popped up and oh, almost a spectacular catch. Well, an opportunity here for the Far West to figure out what number the Southeast is going to have to try to catch.
One ball, two strikes, two away. Siblings having a great time racing around the upper deck with Tater at the plate. See if Tater gets a chance here to poke one. Like to see that. Three, two pitch. Ooh, ball four. High and tight. As strong as the base on balls. We go now to the top of the order. 64, Melikon. Thank you, Melikon. Curtis, runner for the pitcher at first base, number 49, Stelly. Stelly coming on as a courtesy runner. I gotta ask how a kid from Thibodeau, Louisiana is a Boston Red Sox fan. Living in a new world. Nelson, MLB at bat. Mom and dad. Hits the ball on the nose, but right at the left field. And now that sends us to the final half inning. Southeast down to their final three outs. They need four to tie and one to win. Southeast in the sixth inning, no one. Coco Beach. Here we are in the final inning. Farmers three in the first, three in the third. I'm sure the Far West is thinking a couple more runs here just to be safe. Kyle Day leading things off. Pitch fouled away. Now the Southeast should be looking for another quick one, two, three inning here like they had in the, in the last half. Get back in, load their bats. Try to put at least a four spot on the board, tie this thing up. There's the first one. One down, two to go. Order. Good to 
Top of the order. Noah Gutierrez at the plate. Thump. We got a little bit of a break because we've got to take our camera and move it on the other side of the big boy fence for the 13s and 14s. We got to move the mound. We got to move the bases. We got to take down a fence. Yep. So it's going to take a few minutes. And our next game scheduled for 11.45. 11.45. There you have it. Right from our vice president of national events. I just threw a dart at the clock, and that was the number it hit. So that's what we're going with. Perfect. Now you got to allow uh, the uh, Disney operations enough time to to get that uh, temporary fence down that the uh, 11s and 12s have been playing at. Swing and a miss. They've already got the fence for the 13 and 14s up behind it. Um, and then, of course, like you said, Bernie, we got to move our our uh, center field camera to behind that last fence. Popped up, this should, no. No, typically, like you said, this is such a wide range. That was a playable ball, but at this age, it's a long way to run. And to get those legs cranking. And in this case, it kind of works in the batter's favor because he gets another life. Same spot. This one, though, on top of the Braves dugout. At least will be the Braves dugout for one more year, I believe, right? At least one more year? One more. Yeah, the, um, you know, Bernie, that's a little confusing to me. I don't understand this, but, you know, the Braves are moving their spring training home to St. Petersburg. Or the, Punta Gorda. Isn't that near St. Petersburg? Mm, hour drive, hour okay, and a half well, drive. Okay, well, somewhere over there. Anyway. The Houston Astros and the Washington Nationals decided that they were going to move their spring training home to West Palm Beach. Right. Thirteen months later, yep. they're in their new complex of West Palm Beach. Yep. They had spring training there this past spring. The Atlanta Braves, 19 months ago, decided that they were moving their spring training home. Yep. And it's not going to be ready until 20, till the spring training of 2019. Can you explain that? Maybe the uh, the site needed a little more work done on it to prepare it for a stadium. Two and a half Three years? years. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the Braves do have one more spring left here at the Wide World of Sports. It's really a shame to see all the all the teams leave Central Florida and head south. Yeah, honestly, this is such a nice stadium to basically sit vacant. Yeah. It's the only two-deck, uh, two double-decker stadium in all of spring training, and that in, including out in Arizona. This is the only one in all of Major League Baseball that has upper deck. Xander, the Z-Man. His dad, John, played for UC Santa Barbara and was a manager in the minor leagues for two years. Baseball DNA. In the center, out number two. And now the far west, they're one out away from being the All-American Games champions. Two outs. Now batting number 39, Rossi. Check that. Two away here in the top of the sixth. It's all right. Here's Rossi from Salinas, California. It's another Mike Trout fan. And he's an Oakland A's fan. How does that work? A lot of good baseball on the West Coast. Ball 
Ball of strength with two away. Luke Rossi has got, and I'm going to go back to baseball DNA again. Yep. He's got a cousin who was a very famous baseball player, Joe DiMaggio. Obviously, he's a, a cousin a couple times removed, but uh, it still goes back to my same baseball DNA. Got to like that. You got the party started with the two-run home run back in the first inning. Full count. Two out trying to send us to the bottom of the sixth inning. And he draws a walk. Rossi with the base on balls. That brings up Ethan Watson, the catcher. Yeah, well, one of the things we talked about difference here. U Triple S A this says fall in U Triple S A baseball rules. You bat nine, ten or your entire roster. They've elected to bat their entire roster. Here so you don't see quite as many at bats for players like Watson who smashes this ball through the infield. But look at that gun. Watson with the base hit and the I was thinking hit. he'd score on that, Goes but that was, that was a great throw. Um, but it should have went into a cutoff, man. But uh, it was definitely displaying the cannon. Just saying, this is why you don't run on me. That's right, he did throw a perfect strike to the plate. It would have been in a rundown and you tried to go home. I don't oh, even yeah. think it would have been close. The Southeast is going to the bullpen. New pitcher. We'll take a break. 6-2 our score. The Far West now threatening for Southeast America. here in the sixth inning. Number 56, Silent. We're back here for the sixth inning. Now stepping to the plate for far west. Southeast needs a shutdown right here. If they're going to have any chance to come back in the bottom half of the sixth inning, the door has to be slammed shut on the far west right here.
Well, you start off, Kai comes in, and the first two are strikes, pitcher against pitcher. Oh, two. Man, mm. that ball came in and it was ripped back up the middle. Here's the throw home hole. It was too high, two coming to score. Had him going, and then that ball was ripped back up the middle. Jasper Adelman at the plate. Throw was on the money, but high. And one batter later, Kai takes care of Jasper Adelman to end the inning. Couple more on the books. It's eight to two as we head to the bottom of the sixth here at Champion Stadium. Three experience. Eight two Far West trying to get their second win here. We saw them take the 9 new division. I think the geography really does make it intriguing that you get to come and be a part of your region. Kind of do like a regional battle, if you will. Bragging rights for your neck of the woods. Number 62, McMorris. William McMorris. William McMorris, the pitcher leading things off. And I think that is... This program has grown over the years. You've really just seen a lot more people excited and wanted to be a part of it, right? Well, yeah. Oh, by f yeah, the program has grown by leaps and bounds in the last two years. Um, but I'll tell you what I've, what I've really noticed is in the first two years of this program, the Far West and the Atlantic yep. regions, they were in every championship game and won more than half of the championship games, you know. Um, and then you have noticed that the Southeast has come on, the Midwest has come on, the Central has come on, the Northwest has come on, the Great, I mean, it's now it's everybody. And, and, and what that means is, is the program is drawing out the best talent in each of the regions around the country. Catchers. Mm -mm. The catcher for Far West, number 40, Ray Hernandez. Ray Hernandez. Far West, former catcher, Ethan Watson. Pitching now. That's always tough to do. Catch a few innings and then go to the mound. Hi, Hopper Fair down the line. And McMorris. McMorris. Gets a double. These guys come prepared with all the paraphernalia, don't they? Yeah, I wish they would outlaw all that baseball. I think it gives the uh, batters a, um, 
artificial sense of security to hug the plate. And I think that's why we see so little of pitchers pitching inside anymore. It's because the batters get right up on top of the plate because they're wearing basically gladiator gear. No balls, a strike. Swing and a miss. 0-2. The panda here, he likes Giancarlo Stanton. That man can hit a baseball. Can hit it a mile. And then some. Looking for his first hit of the day, 0 for 2. <laughs> Late in this one. Watson on the hill for the far west. I'm not quite sure why he's even looking at the runner on second base. That guy means nothing to him. Yeah, not an 8-2 uh, oh. game. Yeah, six-run lead. You just pound the strike zone. Pound the strike zone and let your defense do its job. You start worrying about runners, and now soon you're not concentrating on the strike zone. And you either start walking people or you start leaving fat pitches over the plate that, that uh, batters can do damage with. And I just, six run lead, just attack. Two, two foul back. The pitch called strike three. They're two outs away. One out. Now back, number 67, Donnell Sandifer. Sandifer at the plate. Sandifer laced a triple his last at bat. Yeah, we saw he's got some wheels. He Came in to score the second run of the contest, trying to drive home the third here and keep the Southeast hopes alive. Oh and one. Goes to the backstop. A ball of strike and an out. Sandifer, double, triple run. Two for two day. It's not a bad day at the ballpark, if you will. Not at all. Good day at the office. The 1-1. One, one. You like that spot. Healthy cut.
Nice stop. One in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Payoff pitch, got him, two away. Two outs. The batter, number 53, John Walsh. And John Walsh, their final hope. Backstop helped take care of that one. Yeah, we put the shorter barricade up uh, there for the 9s, 10s, 11s, and 12-year-olds. Um, that'll come down for the next two games. Yeah. Called strike. And now they're down to their final strike. The one two pitch. Two and two. This one lifted and no, oh, almost caught it first. Good effort there by Jack Buholtz. Trying to make the play in foul territory. We've seen a lot of defensive hustle in this game. A lot of defensive hustle. I, I know you, we've seen great defense all, all week long in these All-American games. But uh, there's been a couple really nice efforts this morning's championship. Got to love it when the athletes are hustling for every play. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Ground ball to shortstop. Over to first and far west. They're the All-American champions. What a moment for these youngsters celebrating a great week. And even the youngsters are getting in it too. The little brothers, little sisters. Got the moms down there getting the, uh, getting the photographs. It's all about taking it all in, enjoying this moment. The box score for the ball game for Far West National, eight runs on 10 hits, six runners stranded and three errors recorded. And for Southeast America, two runs, seven hits, nine runners left on base. So the Far West, they win it today. A big Final reason, score. their starting pitcher, Far Julian, West who National pitched so team. brilliantly, he is down on the field with our own Lindsay Schmidt. Lindsay? Thanks, Bernie. I'm here with Julian Far West, starting pitcher for today. Julian, what were the keys to the game for you guys? Uh, just get strikeouts, some base hits, just get the runs in. What was it like pitching with the lead that you guys had? Did it give you some confidence up there? Yeah, I believe in my defense. They're a really good team, and it was really good. And I'll let you get back to your celebration, but what are some things that you will always remember from this week? Um, really? Uh, to see how standing plays my defense made and how much support my parents gave 
Awesome. Well, congratulations, Julian. You can head back on over to that celebration. Back to you guys. Well, they're having so much fun here at Champion Stadium. You had such a good time. Why not play two more? Hey, why not? They're moving the fence. We will be back on the air in about an hour with the 13U championship game. But for now, for Matt Trebuchon, Lindsay Schmidt, and our entire U-Triple-S-A crew back here in Enviera. Bernie Gunther saying so long for now. 13U championship game comes your way next.